If you are going through gallbladder pain or an all-out gallbladder attack, the following methods will help you stop a gallbladder attack fairly quickly. But stay tuned to the end of the video as you will learn of a new method to completely dissolve gallstones or toxic sludge from home, which is the real cause of your gallbladder attack. Hi, my name is Mario Vino, and I am creating this video for those who are going through severe gallbladder attacks. A gallbladder attack can be a scary thing, and many of you do not know what to do when you're going through one. So I am creating this video just for you. See, I myself have suffered through gallstones and all their symptoms, and I'm here to tell you how I managed to alleviate the pain when I was undergoing through a gallbladder attack myself. I would also like to tell you how I eventually got rid of all the gallstones altogether and stopped the pain from ever coming back. For those of you who are suffering from gallstones and gallbladder attacks, the biggest dilemma comes when you're going through one yourself. See, conventional type thinking dictates that your only two choices are to either schedule an appointment for a gallbladder removal or to actually wait and, and take pain medication until you can schedule that appointment, or at least until you can rack up the money to be able to afford it. A third type of choice is available to those people who are a little more open-minded and to me it's a more viable solution and that is a flush. But a flush actually takes time, it takes a little more time to actually see the results. So in the meantime, what can you do in order to alleviate the pain that can result from a gallbladder attack? What can you do at least until you can take measures to address the underlying cause? What I would like to be discussing with you today is do-it-yourself do it alternatives or things that you can do at home with regular kitchen ingredients and household items that will, in most cases, alleviate the pain that can result from a gallbladder attack. Before I go into the recipes, first thing is you need there are certain types of foods that actually trigger gallbladder attacks some of these foods that I'd like to a list of these foods that I'm actually going to read for you are foods that have been scientifically validated they've noticed that these foods actually trigger gallbladder attacks so you want to definitely keep away from uh, ingesting any of these foods okay so here's the list red meat pork poultry, and that includes uh, chicken, it includes duck, geese, turkey, uh, quail. Any processed meats, especially sausages, salami, animal fats such as uh, lard, organ meats like kidneys and liver, eggs, avocados, corn, especially GMO corn, soy, all gluten, wheat, rye, that originating from wheat, from rye or barley, onions, beans, oranges and grapefruits, cabbage, cauliflower, nuts, black tea, coffee, all dairy, all carbonated drinks, and most definitely alcohol. Okay, so here's my top five recipes for helping you find relief from a gallbladder attack. Uh, these have been uh, tried and tested for a long time. The first one is apple cider vinegar and unsweetened apple juice. This is quite a simple recipe that helps end the gallbladder attack fairly quickly. It's a pretty good success rate with these. What we're going to do is we're going to take uh, 8 to 12 ounces of apple juice. And to that we're going to add anywhere between one to three uh, tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. This is unfiltered. 
I tend to always get Brax organic apple cider vinegar. I'm just going to do two here. Okay. One note that I like to make, Mott's, most Publix or most um, supermarkets have Mott's or carry Mott's. Mott's offers a fresh pressed apple juice from fresh pressed apples uh, as opposed to from a concentrate. Make sure it's unsweet. Whole Foods carries these. These are fairly actually about eight bucks or nine bucks and these are fresh pressed from apple juice it's actually a real good brand and it's a good buy you can always use these also um, okay so I'm gonna go ahead and drink this up and it's actually fairly good taste My second favorite recipe for gallbladder attack relief is a simple coffee enema. And this is probably the quickest way to alleviate yourself of pain from a gallbladder attack. An enema is a means by which you can administer fluid, or in this case it could be water, or in this case it could be coffee water, to the uh, large intestine via the rectum by using an enema bag like this one, okay? This is a two-quart enema bag. I know what you're thinking, put what up my what? Well, I've, I've had you know that coffee enemas are not new. Right? So this is not a new procedure. Actually, coffee enemas have appeared in medical transcripts and medical literature dating back as, as late as the 19th century and as recently as the Merck's Manual of 1972. For example, many Russian and German hospitals use this method to uh, help patients recover faster from any uh, surgical procedures that they've actually done. Or to actually relieve themselves of the symptoms of post-op symptoms, post-operative symptoms. For example, also, over 30 years, the Gerson Institute has actually used regular regime of coffee enemas as an integral part of their cancer treatment programs that focuses on detoxification. Their success rate is extremely high for cancer and for many other diseases as well, but they use coffee enemas particularly for that purpose. Coffee enemas, what's really helpful about coffee enemas is that they help the gallbladder release debris or sludge or toxic stagnant bile in the liver and gallbladder by triggering those organs to release. Bile in the large, excuse me, bile in the gallbladder tends to be more concentrated than the bile in the liver. When there's excessive toxicity in the gallbladder in the, or in the bile, the bile tends to solidify, it tends to get a little thicker. When the uh, solidification process reaches a certain point, it actually forms masses that press up against the walls of the gallbladder. And these, this pressure actually triggers a gallbladder attack or could actually pressure, trigger uh, reflex pain to the back between the shoulder blades. It could actually uh, trigger pressure in the area. There's a lot of symptoms associated with a gallbladder attack. But by adding, by, by aiding the gallbladder and the liver to purge themselves of the stagnant bile itself, it, the substances that actually trigger inflammation are released so the pain actually is minimized because these substances are no longer going to be there or they're minimized. So again, I'm going to be providing a detailed uh, set of instructions on how to do a coffee enema at the end. Another thing, see, a lot of, another thing is that a lot of people tend to ask, why can't I just drink the coffee? 
okay? And the, the thing about coffee is that when you ingest coffee, when you drink coffee, the coffee gets processed differently than when it is administered via an enema bag. The reason is coffee via an enema gets absorbed directly into the liver via the portal vein. When you drink coffee, the digestive juices actually alter the very chemicals or the very components that actually within the coffee that trigger the liver to go into detox mode. So coffee is is uh, is an important. It's a, a coffee via an enema bag gets absorbed directly without altering those chemicals that assist the gallbladder and the liver in emptying themselves of that stagnant bile. And again, that stagnant bile is what causes inflammation. Inflammation causes pain. Okay, for my third favorite recipe, we're going to be using beets, lemon juice, and flaxseed oil. It's also a very simple recipe. You would take, you would grate some red beets, preferably non-GMO. Uh, this is a common crop uh, that is uh, genetic, has been genetically modified. And we're going to take the juice of, of one lemon or lime would be good. And I'm going to show you a way that you can actually, you could either extract a lemon by using a juice extractor. Many of people might have one of these. If you don't have one, I'm going to show you a pretty neat way of doing it. It's by using a, a fork. So we just go like this. And you twist it around. Just showing you something extra to make it easy on you. Okay, and pour that. And we're going to take the, the juice of, excuse me, hold on a second, got the cap on this. So we're going to take one tablespoon. Cold press flaxseed oil, and I prefer getting to make sure that it's organic flaxseed that really helps out. So it's a simple remedy. You mix it all together. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking one whole tablespoon of this every half hour when you're going through your gallbladder attack. Every half hour you take one of these. When the pain has subsided, then you can go to one hour and eventually two hours, once every hour. This actually tastes pretty good. It tastes like regular salad. So here we go. Okay, for my fourth recipe, and this one's actually a real good, a real good one, very simple. And regardless of what you're uh, choosing to actually do, which other recipes you're using, this will probably should not be out of what you do. It should always be present. And it's real simple. You take an apple, you eat it 30 minutes before a meal. Is the malic acid is actually going to help uh, soften some of those gallstones, and this can actually great majority of cases it can actually prevent a full-blown gallbladder attack. So this is more like a prevention type recipe but it is highly, it's used in a lot of uh, circles, alternative circles and it's very good. Okay my fifth, for my fifth uh, recipe it's a recipe for baking soda, apple cider, and apple cider vinegar in water. This is actually, again, all these are very simple recipes, but they work very well. 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna take baking soda powder, make sure it's pure. The best brand you can actually buy, which I don't have here, is Bob's Red Mill. It is certified not to have aluminum. This one says pure. This one's from CBS, but there's a lot of brands that you can you can find this just about anywhere. Just regular baking soda powder. I happen to have some here. And we're gonna take a quarter of a teaspoon. Doesn't need to be exact measurement. And into about four ounces of water. To that, we are going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Okay, and again, apple cider vinegar that I'm using is Bragg's Organic. And that's basically all. You can actually take this one or twice a day, even three times a day. There's no uh, ill effects from drinking this. So here we go. The taste is not the best, but it does the job. Now I'm going to give you an extra bonus recipe that I use a lot. I use it a lot for cleansing because it's extremely alkalizing and it's just simply juicing. We're going to be juicing carrots, beets, and celery. All of these are extremely alkalizing. We're going to use a juicer like this one, the Omega juicer. You could use a juicer like this difference between this juicer and the Omega juicer is that this one has gears, has metal gears, and they basically rotate. You put the matter on top, you put the food stuff on top, and it triturates them, it, it, it leaves them into a fine pulp, and it squeezes out the juice. The juice will come out from underneath it. You put a receptacle, receptacle underneath here, a container, and another one here for the pulp. The pulp comes out of here, the juice comes out of here. There's a big difference between these two types of juicers and a blender. A blender is, again, you blend everything together, the pulp and the juice and everything. We're not going to be using either a blender or a Nutri-Bullet, which is what it does. You can use that for other purposes, but for our purpose, we're going to use this type of juicer or, or this type of juicer, the Omega juicer. The Omega juicer does has a has a wheel, and when you when you put the food stuff on top, what it actually does is it is it grinds it into a fine pulp. There's a there's a metal grating around it, and it pushes the pulp against it and the juice comes out and goes into the walls of this metal cavity here and it comes out through here. The difference, the major difference in terms of what can you juice between a triturating type juicer and a centrifugal type juicer like this one is that with this one you can only do hard vegetables like the ones we see here, okay? You cannot do leafy vegetables. With this type of juicer, you cannot do, you can do, in addition to doing hard vegetables, you can actually do leafy vegetables. So you could do uh, spinach, you could do lettuce, uh, kale, whatever you want. So that's the biggest difference between these two juicers. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and start the process, or even before that. The, a big advantage of doing juicing is when you start doing any sort of cleansing, you're you're lifting up a lot of uh, a lot of debris that is stuck in different parts of your body. It could be your intestinal tract, it could be your liver, it could be your gallbladder, and that matter is a lot of times is that debris is very toxic. When you 
when when you start juice when you start doing cleansing, it's almost like you're going into a house that you haven't cleaned for a very long time. Uh, if you don't have protective gear, you're bound to get uh, sick. So this is basically the mask that we use or our protection mechanism to help us increase our pH so that we won't get sick. Because when you do any sort of cleansing, the pH drops dramatically and we want to be able to, to you know, have the pH high enough so when you do cleansing you won't get sick. And This is one way of doing that. The beets actually help uh, promote bile flow and so do carrots. The combination of all of them are, is extremely alkalizing in the body, meaning the pH will go up. So, okay, so let's go into, let's do some juicing. I'm going to use a receptacle. What I did here, this is my own little nifty thing that I came up with. I was tired of getting all my clothes all dirty when the, when I would, when I would do juicing, especially with doing red beets, it tends to splatter quite a bit when it comes out of this nozzle here, when it comes out of this orifice. So what I did is I cut a, a little piece of half inch vinyl PVC and I insert it here, you know, and okay, so it goes in pretty, fairly good. Okay, so let's start the process. You're going to see the difference. The pulp is going to stay inside the filtering mechanism here and the juice will come out of here. I'm going to do I'm going to do the carrots first. Then I'm going to do the beets and last I'm going to use the celery and the reason why I'm using the celery last is because it has a lot of juice it's going to push all the rest of the nutrients through the gravy. Okay, so I've just finished. And okay. this juice is actually very sweet. And it's quite delicious. You can drink this combination. Drink about four ounces every hour or so. You can drink more if you'd like to, if you're already used to the beets. Uh, but the beets themselves can actually cause some reactions in some people that are not used to them. So let's just stick to four ounces every hour and you can do this uh, maybe about 10 to 12 ounces uh, a day would be okay. Uh, when you're doing any sort of cleansing this is actually very good. When you have a say you have colds this is also very good. Okay. The recipes I've just mentioned are very helpful with relieving gallbladder attacks, but they will not address the underlying cause, which is gallstones in your gallbladder, liver, or bile ducts. Dietary changes can also help you, but again, the, the, what, the damage has already been done. The gallstones are there, and dietary changes are only help you manage the problem but they're not going to solve the problem. Earlier I mentioned how a lot of people are using flushes to get rid of gallstones and I myself have, have uh, used that method quite successfully but I've used it uh, differently and I'm going to go into that, into that later on. Uh, but there's certain, the reason why I've done it differently is because there's certain issues that are not addressed by a simple flush, by the way that most people do the flush. The first issue is you're not preparing the body correctly. If you do not prepare the body correctly, you tend to get sick. Later on, I want to tell you how to do that. Another issue is the amount of time that it actually takes to get rid of all the gallstones. I've heard of people taking 20 and 30 different times to actually get rid of all of the gallstones and to actually start seeing some effective or satisfactory results. Now mind you, some people can get rid of, get rid of the gallstones that are causing the pain in just about you know one time, sometimes it takes two or three times. It really depends on the person and the metabolism of the person and, and the level of toxicity that this individual has. So that varies from person to person. Another issue is that most people tend to reach a plateau, and that is when you're, 
you you fail to release to eliminate any gallstones, but yet you still feel that there's gallstones there. You may feel the the reflex or the referred pain to the back of the shoulder blades, in between the two shoulder blades, or on top of the shoulder blades. You may actually feel pain in the back and the lower in the lower back. You may uh, you may also feel uh, sensations of pressure underneath the rib cage on the right side, or you may feel you actually gallbladder attacks there. All these are symptoms associated. So you may still feel those, but uh, you're still you're not eliminating anything. Uh, and this is because there is a gallstone or a collection of gallstones that are that has gotten uh, caught somewhere in the bile duct, and but it's impeding the flow of bile. It's also impeding the flow of other gallstones and sludge that want that the body wants to give, you know, wants to eliminate. Another reason is some of these larger uh, gallstones are calcified, and therefore, they're, in my opinion, calcified gallstones tend to be harder to eliminate than simple cholesterol gallstones because they respond in, in a different way to malic acid. Malic acid is the the main constituent in a flush that actually helps eliminate gallstones. Another thing is one of the biggest fears that people harbor is that, uh, or that people fear is that some people tend to harbor larger gallstones and they're harder and they, they're afraid that they're going to get caught in the bile duct. So again, this is something that we when you're doing a flush, you need to prepare the body before doing any cleansing. And one of the best ways that I have found to be able to address all these issues is the Pulverex protocol. The Pulverex protocol is a 30-day program that works in two stages. First, it helps to dissolve and break apart gallstones, both types of gallstones, the cholesterol gallstones and the calcified gallstones. It also helps dissolve toxic sludge or stagnant bile in the gallbladder and liver and also the common bile duct. And it also helps to alkalize the body. Okay, So it helps to neutralize the toxins that can often cause unwanted secondary reactions. Second, it helps to purge the gallstones or the gallstones build up the ones that are being dissolved safely without any danger of ever being stuck in, in the bile ducts. The advantage of, of this method is, as we're told by actual people, is that doing one of these, uh, one of these cleanses, one of these protocols, the Pulverix protocol is the equivalent of, how, of doing, actually doing six regular flushes. And this is what we're being told by uh, actual users of uh, the program plus the added benefit of that it actually helps to solve calcified gallstones that a regular flush will not do so you are preventing the reactions that occur when doing a regular flush by doing this so this addresses all the issues that I've mentioned before I'm going to leave uh, several links at the bottom of this video and I may add some others I want to leave a link on actual for the actual page where you can find out more information about the Pulverex protocol plus I'm also leaving a link of where you can find more information on the how to do a, a coffee enema actually a video and an actual page so I'm here to help you I sincerely my main thing is to actually help you guys. I'm not here to sell you any products. I just want to be able to help you. So feel free to reach me via email and I will answer any questions that you have. Thank you.